drive. He's going deep for Brown. And got his man complete. And he'll go down, but not before getting this inside the 30. And we have free football overtime. Here we go. It's a little teaching moment here. Overtime rules. Remind us how this goes, partner. Okay, so in the past, we had sudden death. First team to score wins, but no longer. Now, if the team receives the ball, scores a touchdown, they win the game. If they kick a field goal, though, or don't score, the other team gets a possession. And after both teams get a possession, then we're into sudden death. First team to score wins the game. So a tie ball game here as the kick's away. This one fielded out to five. And he returns this to the 22. And now Chicago getting ready to go as they take the field. Except for their first drive here in overtime. And this is where the crowd can really become a factor. They've had to battle it all day, but I know what you're saying. In overtime, that gets doubled, doesn't it? At least, because now the crowd really wants to be involved and help their team. And that first drive can dictate the whole thing because they know if this team takes it downfield and scores a touchdown, it's game over. It's been loud in here so far. Officially nothing on that last run. They'll try again second and 10. Now a first throw here in overtime. Nowhere to go here. He lost the football. And the ball is going to wind up out of bounds. So they will lose yardage, but they'll keep the football. I don't know about you, but I can hear and feel the sigh of relief all the way up here in our booth. That was palpable. The sideline, the friend there. No doubt about it. The ball goes over the sideline, able to retain possession. No turnover. <laughs> I know his coach is screaming. Just hang on to the ball, man. It'll be a game of eight, but it'll also lead to a fourth down. Well, the defense did its job. Now they're going to get the football with a chance to win it. And it feels like they ran out on the field, and right before they did, they told the offense, don't worry about this. We got you. Okay, we got the situation under control. We'll get it back for you for a chance to win the game. And, boy, they did it well. They'll score that a 36-yard punt. And possession will switch hands first and 10. The Vikings now heading on to the field. Their defense did its job, got the stop. All they need is three, and this is over. Couldn't have done much else other than score themselves and end it. But they turned it back over to them, and now all they need is a field goal to win the game. An excellent job by the defense. Can the offense finish things off? Yeah, part one is done, now part two. Boy, the numbers throwing the football just not trending in the right direction. Last week, he was under 50%. He's under 50% again here. And we haven't gotten an announcement, but it appears to me that he might be a little dinged up, and it's just trying to play through. You know, he's one of those tough guys that wants to answer the bell each and every play for his team. That might be throwing off his accuracy. Now a deep ball there on second down, but it'll wind up incomplete. Well, so far on this drive, they've done some good work. They force incompletions on first and second down, bring up third and ten. That brings up the big question. Do they bring pressure, or do they play coverage on this down? Now a shot taken on third down, but it's going to wind up incomplete. Overtime with less than two minutes to play, and we are still all tied. Big call here in overtime. They're going for it on fourth down. They're going for it. It's Kaepernick. And it's incomplete. They cannot convert, and they turn it over. Boy, it looked like he had it and dropped it. And the Bears are going to get the football back, and they're going to get it in great field position. On first down, Lance. The Vikings after him, and they get there for the sack. Yannick Ngakwe, who else? He's in there for his fourth sack of the afternoon. Now then, after the sack, it'll be interesting to see what they have planned for second and 23. On the give, this is Harris. Fighting to stay on his feet past midfield. And he'll get it down to the 47 here. 57 yards rushing for him now as he was just trying to will his guys to an overtime victory. Now another timeout called for by the offense. 
defense. They'll be down to just one remaining as we step aside here in overtime. On third and long, it's Lance. It's incomplete. Took a shot, couldn't connect. Here's J.K. Scott now. On for a very important punt here in overtime. And this will be out of bounds at the what here? The 12-yard line. Minnesota's offense takes over possession. Neither team scored yet. Now we go to sudden death. Next points win this game. How about the tension right now? It is ratcheted up, isn't it? I mean, now whatever happens, points are scored. That's your ball game. Can't wait to see the defense now. Do they get a little more aggressive in order to not let the team just drive the ball easily down the field? Got to be careful, though, right? Yeah, if you're too aggressive, you just give up something easy and cheap. But some defensive coordinators, they'd rather take a stand that way as opposed to being nickel and dime down the field. Williams going to get it again on second down. Williams is going to have the first down and a little more. And he's free going down the left side. It's a foot race. And he's into the end zone for the touchdown and a game winner in OT. Well, you never know what you're going to expect when you come to the stadium to call a game. Sometimes you get good ones. Sometimes you get bad ones. Sometimes you get great ones. And that's what we had here. What an exciting finish on that last big play. And I think that as we look at it, when you're talking about a great finish, which went along with a game that obviously was dramatic because we did get